In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the analog input with a, uh, with a potentiometer, and we're going to use that to control an LED. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab an LED, drag it onto my board. I'm going to connect the long side to power, or rather, I'm going to put the long side, the short side to ground with a resistor. And I'm going to run a wire from this pin down to pin 9. I'm going to make that an orange cable. So that's going to be controlling this LED. I made sure I picked one of the pins that has PWM output. That's important here because we need to be able to control the brightness of the LED with our potentiometer, which is basically a knob. So that's on input 9, which is a PWM pin. I am going to make sure everything's working by going to the code section, switching over to text because, of course, you want text. I'm going to add a variable called LED pin. So int LED pin is equal to 9. And then I'm going to control copy. Every time I see 13, I'm going to paste LED pin. And this isn't exactly critical, but it's good to test to make sure I didn't screw anything up. And the LED is blinking happily. So I'm going to stop code. I'm going to remove most of the stuff from the loop. And then I'm going to hide the code section. And let's add our knob. So potentiometer has three pins. The most important pin is our wiper. So this wiper is going to be what we're reading. So I'm going to take and run a wire from the breadboard down over down around the Arduino, over to the side, and all the way back over to A0. And we're going to make that a turquoise wire just to make it pretty. And I can take and adjust this guy. Maybe I'll pull this down a little bit to make it... There we go. So this wire goes all the way down around. Now we have two other ends. One side of this is going to hook to the ground. So I'm going to hook the left side to the ground. And we're going to make that a black wire. And then we're going to run a resistor to the power. That way we don't ever go all the way up. And where I put my resistor is going to change the exact range. But let's test our knob. So we need our code. We need to add our knob to the code. So first thing I'm going to do is int. Pot pin, not pot like the drug, but pot like potentiometer, is A0. That looks like a, doesn't look like a number, but it actually is. And the critical thing is that's capital A. And by using capital A0, that's a constant that refers to an actual number that is the internal pin number for the analog zero. I'm also going to make sure I do a pin mode. Pot pin. Input. And then we're also going to do a serial dot begin so we can use serial debugging. And a couple of people have asked me about the number here. It really has to do with how fast we're talking. I can do a di uh, video explaining it, but it doesn't really matter. Just know that's a magic number that happens to work. There are several magic numbers. 9600 happens to be a good one. And all we're going to do right now is we're going to do, we're going to make a, another variable called pot. Al equal to zero. And we are going to take that little trace. I'm going to take and pot val equal to analog read pot pin. And we're just going to take semicolon in the line and print. Serial dot print ln dot val. So that's going to just spit out what the value of the potential is. So I'm going to start the code. And I'm going to go to serial monitor. And if I start turning this knob, it's going to go up and up and up and up until I get right up to, but not quite to 1024. It's going to go to 2019. 1019. In class, I had the resistor on the ground side, and that made it so it went 4 to 1023. Now it goes from 0 to 1019. It doesn't really matter. It's just to keep it so if you're all the way to one side, it doesn't get dead short. 
So there we go. There's our knob. I can now turn the knob and the update, the value updates accordingly. Now we need to set the brightness. So we're going to go in LED val is equal to zero. And then in here, instead of print line, we're going to do standard print. And then we're going to add a comma, copy and paste, quote, comma, space, quote. And the reason I did that was so that it prints nice formatted. Or I can even take, so that's going to, now we're going to take and print, we're going to say pop, uh, LED val is equal to pop val. And then we're going to go uh, serial dot, serial dot print ln LED val. And then we're going to do analog right LED pin, comma, LED val. Now, right now we're just passing the value of the pot value right into LED value, but we're going to see a problem with that. So I'm going to start the simulation. And I'm going to start this knob all at zero. At zero, everything's fine. The LED is off. If I start tipping this knob upwards, the LED gets higher and higher and higher until all of a sudden it went dim again. And the reason it went dim again was that our LED can only read numbers the 0 to the 5 degree number from back for the fading. So I need to take this number and turn it into another number. The easiest way I could do that, the simplest way, would be use a divi divide by 4. But there's actually a better way. We're going to use what's called the map function. And the map function is built in to Arduinos and basically does takes some takes to a high and low value from an input and maps it to an output. So I can do um, map parenthesis, what thing we're looking at, which is pop val, and what's the lowest start value, which is zero, and the highest value is 1019. And we're mapping it from zero to 255. So zero is going to be mapped to zero, and 1019 is going to be mapped to 255. So now if I start the simulation, I'm at 0, 0. But if I start bringing the brightness up, the LEDs can get brighter and brighter and brighter. And this value, even the top number, we just hit peak. And if I go to the wave system, you'll see that we have those two numbers. They go 0 together. But if I the blue number is going to go up faster than the red number, the red number is going to always stay go in the same direction. So if that goes all the way up and flat, we go flat. If I move it part way down, it will drop for a little bit and then stay flat for a while. If I bring this all the way down to zero, they'll both hit zero together. So that is an analog input mapped to an analog output. 